Hi, ho neighbors, Rito Goji here. And I'm Soylent Greg. And welcome back to Squeeze World Presents The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And when we last left off, um, we picked up this mushroom here because we need to use it to, um, basically, like, like I said, if you know, if you've played Link's, Link's in the past, you know what that's going to be used for. We need a magic mushroom to stop a raccoon from teleporting us. More or less, yeah. Yes. Dicks respawning, okay. Um, Dicks respawn? They are dicks because they oh. respawned when I came back on this. I thought you were saying that the, the enemy is called a dick. No. Like a D I K. Those are, those are keys. <laughs> These are, and these are moblins. Or moblins, whatever you like to, however you like to pronounce that. Mo moblins, but I don't have the best track record with pronouncing things in Zelda games correctly. <laughs> so... I think they really are moblins, kind of like goblins, but I've been saying moblins all my life, so... Oh my god. What? Nilbomb is moblin backwards! <laughs> Okay, so anyway, we're going to briefly leave the forest out this way and get a piece of power. <laughs> we're going to just chuck a piece of power. Yeah, these things in the in the uh, Game Boy Color version do show up quite a lot more often than in the regular one. A uh, oh, piece of heart we can get later. Yeah, there's a buzz blob. We all know it happens when we hit them, so we're not going to. Um, that house will be semi-important later. Not too important, but still kind of there. A lot of these places are going to be of, of somewhat importance later. So, uh, there's a witch here. <laughs> so it's, um... This music is boss, by the way. <laughs> I love this soundtrack, like, overall. So, she's basically just told us if we give her a mushroom, she'll make us magic powder. Or the sleepy toadstool is that. Is that even what they called it in the... I mean, I haven't really read the instruction manual because I got... Like I said, I got my co uh, my copy was like used from Funko Land, so mm -hmm. I was I didn't get a manual with it, but I did download a PDF of it recently. And I think they actually just like this is the Sleepy Toadstool. It's used for something, and we've got magic power now. Unlike uh, Link to the Past, we don't actually have a magic meter in this game. Mm -hmm. We have a limited number, so of we uses. we have a limited number of uses. But if we ever run out, we can always just get another mush uh, mushroom and give it, give it uh, to her, mm -hmm. and it can be used to. Um, I'll go to the for forest, pick some... Uh, th this this text box didn't come up in the original version when you lit the torch. But that's mainly what we're going to be... Okay, I didn't think it would do anything on the mouse or anything. Um, but it's mainly going to be used to... Uh... I said your enemies, not my pet. <laughs> if we use it on this bub buzz blob, it turns into that. And you can... Hey, hey mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah, it's it's mainly going to be used kind of like in the same capacity as the lamp, mm. um, in which we're going to be mainly using it to light torches, but uh, there are going to be some other things we're going to... There's another... So it's not just in controls that it's simplified. It actually takes what in Link to the Past was multiple things, the lamp and the uh, powder that turns enemies into different enemies. Uh, and puts them into one thing. And puts them into one thing. That's yeah. empty chaos. Um, That's not what I was going for, but okay. Uh, you know, butterflies when earlier. it comes to adding things to Game Boy, you know, Nintendo finds a way. So we just use the magic powder on him. No, it's supposed to be sleepy! What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> and it's ter it was tearing the entire time. What? So apparently he ate a mushroom, and then... He had a, 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 he went on a spirit quest and thought he was a raccoon. You know, this game sure is <laughs> seems goofy uh, as an adult. So he's just gonna go home after this, and then we can just uh, head on up here. Oh, boom! And collect the tail cave. Now we can open the tail cave gate. Let me remind you what that key is for. Yep. Uh, we haven't actually seen the outside of Tail Cave. It is a place that is um, accessible from the beginning, but mm -hmm. uh, I knew that we would be going there again later, so I really didn't bother going over. Fair enough. This game really is goofier than both the Zeldas that came before and after it. Yeah. Um, you have these green guys that talk in a Jamaican accent to you. You have... Your caretaker is turned into a raccoon, <laughs> which I'm sure has some precedent in Japanese mythology or something like that. I but. don't know. Well, 
maybe uh, no, no, uh, Tanukis didn't have mushrooms or anything. Um, now there's one more thing I want to do here real quick. Go fishing. Yup. Talk to this guy. Um, now for the longest time, when I was a kid, I thought he had like a fancy hat, like with a like the uh, the brim like kind of bent up, and then mm -hmm. that was like a big collar. But as it turns out, that's actually he's wearing wearing like a like a like a baseball cap and a, has a big mustache. Okay, I was actually going to ask you, is that a beard that he has, or is he wearing some sort of helmet? Um, we'll actually see a, um, a close-up picture of him uh, later on. Okay. Um, but this fishing game takes uh, 10 rupees to play. Um, and like all Zelda games, uh, the fishing game is fantastic. I guess. I'm not really that partial to the Ocarina of Time one these days, but that's just my opinion. So you get five rupees. Okay, end, end the stream. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Do it or I quit. Um, Say you like Ocarina of Time's fishing, you son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, if you, get a, if you get a small fish, you get five rupees. If you get a big fish, you get 20 rupees. But I'm getting a spe that specific fish, the big fish, way on the right here. There's a re good reason I'm doing this. Let's make sure the other fish doesn't go. Oh, the other oh you son of a bitch. See, this is why I waited to get that 50 rupee chest before I came over here. Exactly. You greedy fucking fish. But uh, the, the good news is that if you do decide to clear out the entire pond, you do end up with a profit. Ooh, okay. I wouldn't say it's the best way of making money because it's. Incredibly time I didn't consuming. want to catch this fish. I wanted to catch this other fish. I actually meant to not make my line go out that far. <laughs> Alright, he gives you the instructions every single time. It's annoying. Every single time. Still better fishing than near. I wouldn't know. I have not played near. Either of them. There we go. That's right, Link. Hump that fishing pole, Link. There we go. It's a big one, and it has a piece of heart inside. So it ate a piece of heart. It ate someone's heart. Oh, you oh. just said you wanted to fish again! Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear what I said again? Do you want to fish? Fish forever! <laughs> Oh no, catch the last fish! I, I'll catch, I'll, I'll catch the last fish. Well. Yeah, I may as well. It seems like all my friends have gone away. What? Oh no, I've been hooked! <laughs> oh dear, no, no! I actually meant to get, like, two fish. <laughs> I ended up getting all of them. This pond's all fished out. Why not try your luck in the sea? Okay! <laughs> Did I say that? Forget Shuck it, okay? in the Run sea, now. apparently. <laughs> Thanks for contributing to the deforestation <laughs> of the mysterious woods. All right, let's let's head down to the first the dungeon. The people are starving because <laughs> someone fished all of the fish out of the lake. Slaughter these villages. <laughs> oh, that's such a good game. Lords Lords we should do an right? LP of that sometime. Lords of the Realm 2, yes. I can send people angry messages as compliments <laughs> and they'll like me for it. <laughs> Okay. Like I said, it drops these things all the damn time. Yeah. That and, uh, and Ma I'm sorry to talk about other games during your, your favorite game stream, but that game and Majesty were like the golden age of really cheesy voice mm -hmm. acting. Like, I mean, I haven't played Majesty, but my, my dad had Lords of the Realm too. I still, <laughs> every now and then, find myself busting out, uh, I join the Wild Spirits. <laughs> Uh, when, uh, when a ranger dies in, uh, in, or, you know, I get my, uh, I was doing my taxes the other day, mm -hmm. I said, tax collector. <laughs> I don't, yeah. If you've played Majesty, you think I'm hilarious and want me to get, li like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Alright, so, this is the first dungeon, Tail right. Cave. Um, this room's really easy. With the hard hat beetles in the hole, hole you get a key. Then we go this way. Beetles go down the hole. Oh, they sealed us in, the bastards. Now see, if they could have just disabled that door <laughs> opening, Link would have starved to death slowly in here. Yeah, probably. He would have eaten fairies to survive, because fairies aren't real people. <laughs> oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. 
that game that you played. Oh, you got the compass. Yeah, we got the compass. Um, and no, compass. It's See, I mispronounce everything in the Zelda <laughs> games. It's the compass. So basically, um, much like uh, other games, it'll show you where you know the chest and, and the and the uh, the boss are. But also, if you go into a room with, a, with the, where you can get a key, it will do a little a little. Um, Tone, it will actually it. emit an ear-piercing screech that will not stop until you leave the area. That means there's a key here. Asshole. I wonder how we could find that key. Maybe push the button? Yeah, pretty much. Another key. I'm gonna go this way briefly. Um, the... Thing up here, it's a revolving door. Oh, I thought, always thought those were so cool. It looks kind of like the um, the holes in that Junji Ito. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is my door. It was made for me. <laughs> Please don't go. Don't go. The Enigma of Tail K. <laughs> well, I'll show it off. Durr, durr, durr. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if if any of you have not read Junji Ito, he's the shit. Like, I have no tattoos and will probably never get any tattoos, but if I did get a tattoo, I would probably want something from a Junji Ito comic. You so said it would great. be it would be the girl from Uzumaki who had her head with the with the spiral but, through half of her head. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we can, we can uh, go down here if we want to. There really isn't anything in there. I'm just mapping it. Because like like us, uh, Jinji Ito has crippling OCD. And it definitely comes out in his work. Alright, now we get to hear the ditty. Yeah, woo! And there's some rupees. I'm gonna learn how to play this on the guitar <laughs> and then never stop playing. <laughs> Is I'll that hit. a bombable wall over there? It is, but we do not have bombs yet. We will be coming back for that much later. We can move this block in the way of the spike trap and won't get us. <laughs> Interesting oh, thing that, that is I... something I do want to kind of show off. Oh yeah, go right ahead. Hold on, I'm, I'll go back for, for now. Interesting thing I've noticed, this game, although it does do an admirable job of sim uh, simplifying, it does not um, have an on-screen indicator of how many keys you have. No, that's in the, um, the menu here. Off to the side. Even the NES Zelda had an on-screen key yeah, uh, indicator, which is interesting. Also, oddly enough, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, which use this game's engine, mm -hmm. have an on-screen indicator when you're in dungeons. What? It replaces that little rupee symbol. Huh. Interesting. Other than that, the HUD is exactly the same. So I'm going this way. I'm also trying to go for no deaths, because there's actually a little bonus thing in the ending if you, if you beat it with no deaths. So I'm, is there really? Yeah. There is. And um, so I'm a little paranoid right now. I like how that little sword man keeps oh, oh, shit. Oh, jumping good. like, you can't get me, you can't get me. Yeah, these guys are a pain in the ass. So what you have to do is you hit them, and they display a symbol. Mm -hmm. You have to hit them so all three display the same symbol. If you don't, they'll uh, start walking around again. Oh, fail. So I want to... Fish and nailed. I was kind of hoping that they would be hearts, because they, depending on what, they, what they're all stopped on, they'll drop different things. Like, if they're all on hearts, they'll all drop hearts. If they're all on diamonds, they'll all draw, drop rupees. Really? Um, if they drop spades, if they're all on spades, they'll drop arrows if you can get them. And if they're all on clubs, they'll all drop bombs if you can get them. I'm learning new things all the time about this game, apparently. Oh, there we go. I'm just not used to doing this on a TV. Yeah, no, it definitely makes it different. Okay, good, I, I want hearts. Damn it! Oh damn! Damn! Oh good, good, good. Hearts, hearts, good. Damn it! You get to hear this little ditty the entire time too. Oh yeah. Well, that, that does also mean we're taking less damage. Yeah, I've noticed we've gotten hit twice now and haven't actually taken any damage. That's because it's so little that the uh, because of the acorn. How does it round? Oh shit. Well, that's going to be some good places, but as long as they're gone, I don't care. They'll kind of walk around erratically, which also doesn't help things. The Ace of Spades! The Ace of Spades here! 
so now we got a stone beak. Um. So there's a little bit of history behind this. In the original version of the game, it was a stone slab. And there was a stone slab somewhere in the, or more than one, maybe it's even stone slab, somewhere in the dungeon that would give you a hint. Mm -hmm. And the stone slab would fit into the, you know, the slab fragment. The slab fragment will go into the stone slab and tell you what the hint is. In the deluxe version, because for whatever reason, Nintendo likes to put more hand-holding into remakes, uh -huh. they put more hints into each dungeon. Okay. And because it wouldn't make much sense for you to put a stone slab into a stone slab, or into multiple stone slabs and have different things, mm -hmm. they changed all the stone slabs to owl statues and the fragment into a beak. Beak. Horror. So he'll say, this is, this is the original hint for the dungeon. So he'll say, like, turn aside the spine ones with the shield. So that's going to be a hint for just a bit. I get those sparks I can't kill, which sucks. I'm trying to kill things for hearts now. Mm -hmm. Landmole is here. Well, not really landmole. Oh shit! I got too many hearts. It's oh no no no! This is bad. I don't want deaths. I don't want to die. Yeah, really. So I'm just gonna be extra careful. I know where there's actually a thing that'll give us like pretty much full hearts left. Oh, there there you go. There's a heart right there, so that's good. Oh, no. uh -huh. I'm supposed to be a master at this game, damn it. I know this game by the back of my hand. And I'm usually not dying at this point. It's it happens to lots of guys. It's performance anxiety. Hell, it's not like I'm some sort of master at Super Metroid. There is a door that you cannot can't open. Move a stone block. Those that's one of the kind of new hints that are in the game. I'm not gonna be looking at any more of the hints. <laughs> that's like a fucking Toriel level hint. Let me push this block for you, child. <laughs> <laughs> I will be showing off some hints that are more clever, like the original ones. Mm -hmm. Like the original hint I mean this this will say the original hint again. But basically these guys, you can't hurt them at all. But if you bump into them with shield, it'll knock them over and you can damage them. Expose their delicious inner forms. Exactly. And that'll open the way forward. And Goombas! Goombas! So this, I guess, is kind of sort of teaching you something that you're going to be getting in just a second. Mm-hmm. See, it's, oh. it's teaching you like Super Metroid. Flying things... Well, I can't do anything with that flying thing right now, but... Oh, watch out for those things. Right, watch out for the spike trap, go up here, and you get... Rock's feather. A feather? What's a feather supposed to do? It feels like your body is a lot lighter. Well, if you equip it on a button, you jump. Okay. Um, this is a magic power that Link would learn that he would then subsequently forget for many, many games. This is like the only game, it, uh, like, well, the first. this is the first game you can jump in. Um, for Zelda. This this is like Fez, basically, when he gains the ability, uh, you know, nobody else can even fathom the idea of moving in a different direction. Exactly. One thing I do, and I understand that it's probably because of the limitations of the, the Game Boy format, I do wish that the jump was just an ability that you unlocked rather than a item you had to equip. Yeah, but, um, because they're using both the buttons for items, they, um, they have it as an equipable item. Like, yeah. later on we'll see, like, um, an item that will allow us to lift rocks, like, kind of like the, um, like the power glove. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be an equipable item. got to be equipped, too. Mm -hmm. The only, the only item I think of that I can think of that is automatically equipped onto you and you don't have to put into a button are the flippers. So we got the boss key there, the nightmares key as it's called here. Yeah, it goes with the, uh, the windfish awakening theme, right? Yeah. Waking up the wind fish, I guess. Do, do, do. So then we just basically go this way, and we're pretty much almost done with the dungeon now. There's a mini boss. All you gotta do is jump over the jump over the spike roller and slash him. Usually a lot better than this, but again, LP anxiety. I'm telling you, it's a real thing. Oh yeah, I I, I have come across it multiple times. Although, when I played through Shadowgate back in the day, I actually did end up beating my normal speedrun record just by just playing the game and not even realizing it. Nice. 
That cloud, by the way, uh, is a thing that will allow you to warp to... Uh, oh, yeah, that'll take you back to the beginning. Dungeon. Which is kind of neat, because we're already at the boss. Oh, wait, and we're at the end. Oh, well, let's go ahead and knock him out. Yeah, we may as well. And then... It's the mold one. <laughs> oh, God! Luckily, he only takes four hits to kill. He's a lot easier than, than the one in the past. Damn, you just kicked his ass. Didn't even have time to, like, shout his, like, his heroic spiel or anything. <laughs> um, well, he says, he says outsider when you first come in, but if you fall down the pits there, you don't die. It's just, like, another place you can go and then come back up. Well, we got the first of the instruments of the sirens, which is the full moon, cell full moon cello. Interesting that they gave the bosses the ability to speak in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty much every boss says something. Mm -hmm. Even if it is just, like, kind of just random, unintelligible stuff. Swamp. So basically it's telling you where to go next, where the... Uh, yeah, it's gonna help is. you. And then, uh... And then with the next screen. Yep. Hey, and bud. then it's gonna help you again! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't believe you were real. <laughs> Me or the instrument? I think he was talking about. I think he was talking about me. Let's collect all the instruments. Yes, thank you. Gotta catch a ball. Right, next goal is North Ingaponga Swamp. Hoot indeed. So um, next time. Next time we're gonna be heading up to Gaponga Swamp toward the second dungeon. So uh, until then, I've been Rado Goji. And I'm Soylent Greg. And we'll be here next time. Join us, won't you?